Okay, so the last thing I want to deal with um, or talk about when we have a right triangle is going to be your inverse trigonometric functions. So we've already talked about our trigonometric ratios, or at least the three basic ones, the sine of theta, we have the cosine of theta, and we have the tangent of theta. And again, remember, like those functions are equal to a ratio, a comparison of two sides. So what are our, our inverse trigonometric functions like, and what do they kind of represent or what do they help us be able to identify? To really kind of understand that question, I think it's really kind of important to understand again, like what is inverse operations like and how do we apply them up to this point? So, you know, quick review, if like if I had x plus three, is equal to five and I said solve this, you're gonna use your inverse operations, right? I wanna undo what is happening here. So if I have x plus three to undo adding three, I'm gonna use the inverse operation of addition, which in this case is going to be subtraction, right? So five minus three is going to be a two. If I had the square root of x plus one is equal to seven, right? And I say solve for x, well, I need to use my inverse operations, right? Again, and actually let's go ahead and simplify that. Let's do, let's do a couple of inverse operations. Um, let's do a uh, I don't know, a 2x. So the first inverse operation, I need to undo the square root, right? So undo the square root, my inverse operation is going to be squaring, right? So I have a 2x is equal to a 49. And then I need to use the inverse operation of multiplying by two, which would be to divide by two, right? So x equals a 49 over two. That is your inverse operation. So what the when we're talking about like the inverse operations of our trigonometric functions, that's exactly what they are. They are undoing what the function is applying. It's very important like to recognize here, if I have the sine, um, let's like, kind of go back to our triangle here. So let's do that 30, 60, 90 triangle. If I have my 30, 60, 90 triangle, okay, so that is, let's say, the, I'm not 30, 60, 90, I'm sorry, the three, four, five triangle. Now we talk about here is my theta, right? Now again, we don't know what this angle is, but I can write the relationship of sine of theta is equal to my opposite, right, opposite side, over my hypotenuse. Now, let's say I actually wanted to figure out what this angle was. What I would need to do is use my inverse operation, right? Because right now, what we have is a trigonometric function sine is being applied to my theta. It's saying the sine of theta equals four fifths. Kind of like over here, this is the square root of two X, right, equals seven. So what we did is to solve for X, we had to undo the square root. So how do I undo the sine? Well, that's gonna be used our inverse in operations. So what we can do is basically take the sine inverse of the sine of theta equal to the sine inverse of four fifths. Now, again, we're just gonna keep things rather simple here. We'll only deal with what the calculator is going to give us. We're not gonna get into anything more advanced, just trying to keep this fairly basic. But in this case, my point that I wanna to make to you is now I'm gonna have a theta is equal to a sine inverse of a four fifths. And now using your calculator, you can actually compute what that angle is going to be. So now you're just gonna use the second feature on your sine, I need to do sine inverse, and then you'll just take four divided by five. And guess what? That angle is now gonna equal a 53 Point one three degrees. And you can see like that kind of makes a little bit of sense, right? These angles are not close, not exactly the same, right? If they're exactly the same, it'd be a 45, 45, 90 triangle, but they're a little bit off. So 53 degrees though, does kind of make sense, right? It wouldn't make sense to be like a 30, 60 um, degree triangle. So that does kind of work. So let's kind of do just a quick little, just some kind of practice and of writing these relationships. And so therefore we can find our missing angles because when we have a right triangle, we can use these trigonometric functions, not only to find the missing sides when we're given a side and an angle, but we can also find the missing angles. So let's pretend here, let's say this is three and 11. And let's say I wanted to find this angle. Let's say, boom, let's have, oh, make sure it's a right triangle, right? Let's say we have a triangle that looks something like this. Let's see, we're given, here's my angle theta. Let's say we're gonna say this is going to be a 14 and that's going to be a 15, right? And let's do one where we have maybe a triangle, go back to our kind of traditional way here. Let's say this is going to be a, um, let's do the seven, or let's do the six, yeah, six, seven, eight triangle. And let's give us this one here. Now let's go ahead and deal with what we have in this case. All right, so in this case, um, if I wanna find theta, right? What we need to do is be able to create this relationship. Now, the problem is here, I only have two sides of the triangle. Like I do not know what the third side is. Could you find the third side and use a different trigonometric function? Of course you could, right? But hopefully at this point, you can recognize that that is my opposite side and that is my hypotenuse. So the only trigonometric function that deals with opposite and hypotenuse is going to be a sine. So I can say the sine of theta equals a three over an 11. And now if I want to solve for theta, I'm just going to say that theta equals a sine inverse of a three over 11. So in this case, now what I'm gonna do is a sine inverse of three divided by 11. And you can just say that's going to be a 15.82. So theta equals a 15.82.
three. I'll just go ahead and round it. You can see that I have a theta and now I have the adjacent side, right? Because that side length is between my angle and my 90 degree. And therefore then I have a hypotenuse. What trigonometric function deals with the adjacent side and the hypotenuse? That's going to be cosine, right? So I can say the cosine of theta is equal to a 14 over a 15. So now I can say theta equals a cosine inverse of a 14 over 15. So now theta equals, let's go ahead and apply this. So I'll do a cosine inverse of a 14 divided by 15. And when I do that, I get a 21.04, again, being rounded. And this last example, hopefully you recognize that I don't have a hypotenuse, right? I only have the opposite and the adjacent side. The adjacent side is between my angle and my 90 degree angle. So therefore, in this case, I'm right my trigonometric ratio. I'll say the tangent of theta is equal to a seven over a six. And then if I want to solve for theta, I can just say theta equals a tangent inverse of a seven over six. And therefore now I'll just go ahead and type that into my calculator. So tangent inverse of seven divided by six, and that is going to be a 49.340 as we can go ahead and round. So that'd be a 49.40.